Hello everyone and welcome to a new anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel and in this video we will uh, try to remove the forelimb completely from the body of the dog. So let's get started. So to be able to remove the forelimb completely from the body, from the trunk, in this case we have to cut all muscles which are there to connect the forelimb to the trunk. Which muscle do I mean? The trapezius muscle, the cervical and the thoracic part. So we have to cut it here. We already cut it here. After that, we have to cut the latissimus dorsi. So we have to cut the latissimus dorsi. As you can see here, I will show you just uh, in case you know how, what, what muscles you have to cut in this case. So we have to cut the latissimus dorsi. We have to cut the homotransversalis muscle, we have to cut the brachiocephalic muscle and of course after removing or moving the trapezius muscle to the side we have also to cut the rhomboidius muscle, the three parts of the rhomboidius muscles including the thoracic part, the cervical part and the capital part here in the dog. So we have to cut the rhomboidius muscle. Once we cut all of these muscles, we need to move to the ventral side here and cut, of course, the pectoral muscles, including the superficial pectoral muscles and the deep pectoral muscle. So now I will go to cut all of these muscles and I will see you after cutting this muscle to tell you that there will still just one muscle to be cut which is the ventral serrated muscle but I would like to show you this muscle before I cut it. So see you soon. Okay, after we cut the superficial pectoral muscle and the deep pectoral muscle, so this is the two parts of the superficial pectoral muscle and this is the deep pectoral muscle, here to be able to remove the forelimb we have also to cut some other structures extends between or from the trunk to the forelimb including in this case the axillary artery so this is the axillary artery the axillary vein this big structure here this is the axillary vein they are filled here with rubber which we injected into the circulatory system and next to the axillary artery and axillary vein we can find a lot of small nerves as you can see here they belong to the brachial plexus to the brachial plexus which is formed by the fusion of the last three cervical uh, sp uh, ventral branches of the cervical spinal nerves and the two uh, ventral branches of the first two thoracic spinal nerves and uh, they form together after fusion what's called the brachial plexus which in in in, uh, in turn gives a lot of uh, nerves uh, 12 nerves uh, to the uh, lateral wall of the thorax to the pectoral muscles to the lateral wall or even of the abdomen and uh, to the forelimb of course um, and uh, as I said before to be able to remove the forelimb we have to cut all of these structures look while I'm cutting uh, for the nerves this is all nerves belongs to the brachial plexus so I'm cutting here this is another nerve this is another nerve here, if you look exactly here and now. So once we cut all of these structures and uh, the pectoral muscles ventrally here, we can see this big muscle which I'm going to dissect now called the ventral serrated muscle which has two parts. So in case if you want to remove the forelimb, you have to cut these two parts or the ventral serrated muscle just because uh, it inserts to the serrated face of the medial surface of the scapula. So let me now dissect the muscle, make it clear and after that we can cut it together. See you soon. <music> Okay, so here after we cut 
the axillary vein, axillary artery, and the branches of the brachial plexus, we could move the forelimb. It was like this. And uh, we have moved like uh, the forelimb dorsally like this. Now we can see this big muscle. This big muscle called the ventral serrated muscle. The ventral serrated muscle is big, fan-shaped, as you can see here, has two parts. This is the cervical part of the ventral serrated muscle. And from here toward uh, the ribs, here we have the thoracic part of the ventral serrated muscle. Again, the ventral part of the ventral, uh, of the ventral, sorry, the cervical part of the ventral serrated muscle called also the serratus ventralis serratus originate from the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra and inserts to the serrated face on the medial surface of the scapula. While the thoracic part of the ventral serrated muscle called also the serratus ventralis thoracis originate from the first seven to eight ribs as you can see from here, there, 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 and inserts to the same area, which is the serrated face on the medial side of the scapula. So this uh, muscle, of course, it's there to keep the scapula close to the trunk. It's innervated by this nerve called the long thoracic nerve, long thoracic nerve with regards to the thoracic part of this muscle. The cervical part gets some innervation from the ventral branches of the cervical spinal nerves. And uh, again, this, the name of this muscle, serrated or serrated muscle or ventralis serratus, serratus is from the shape of this muscle. You know, this, it has like teeth everywhere. So the ventral serrated muscle, cervical part, thoracic part, and the insertion of both of them is the serrated face of the medial surface of the scapula. Here in this case, if we want to remove the forelimb completely after we cut all other uh, girdle muscles or, or muscles of the shoulder girdle, in this case, we have to cut also this muscle like this both parts so once we cut this let me just show you we can in this case remove remove the forelimb completely okay again this is the view how we can see after removing the forelimb again we can see just the rest of the ventral serratus muscle but we still have the cervical part here and the thoracic part of the ventral serrated muscle. Here in this view, let me just uh, introduce some other muscles uh, just because we can see them here. Here on the ventral surface of the ventral serrated muscle, we can see this muscle here, uh, the scalenus muscle. The scalenus muscle has two parts in the dog. This is the dorsal scalenus muscle originate from the lateral surfaces of the ribs and inserts to the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra, while next to it we have another small muscle here. This is the ventral scalenus, uh, sorry, the middle scalenus muscle. So the scalenus muscle has two parts in the dog, the dorsal scalenus muscle and the, ven uh, the middle scalenus muscle. The middle scalenus muscle originates from the first rib, which we can palpate here and inserts to the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra. So this is the scalenus muscle here. Uh, we can see another, of course, this is here the deep pectoral muscle, which we cut previously. And here we can see, we can see the tendon of the uh, um, rectus abdominis, the tendon of the rectus abdominis or the, rect uh, the tendon of the, or abonerosis of the straight muscle of the abdomen.